welcome to the optical communication course now we will see that a optical receiver operation we have seen there are the various noise sources and that noise sources are a short short noise poison noise or a poison noise there then we can say that a dark noise and a, a thermal noise now these are the noise sources now after the receiver means we have a after detector is that a detector these are the two noise occur at a detector and this the thermal noise it has the effect on the receiver because of the what type of amplifier we have used now simply we say that a thermal noise is depending upon that load register used in a detector now we'll simple simply draw a circuit of a amplifier so if you see that there is a load register when we say a load register rl for that there will be parallel capacitance c and then we have the amplifier so we'll get the output p out this one is about a amplifier now this load register if we choose the value is higher or a lower then according to that load register so that noise will be increase or decrease again if we increase or decrease the load register then bandwidth will be affected if we increase the load register bandwidth will decrease but noise will be reduced so means like what we can say that for a given amplifier the performance parameter of a receiver that is a bandwidth and a noise that are totally depending upon the load register so for a given amp amplifier so what will be the input impedance for this amplifier that is saying about what will be the load resistance at the detector so you can say that if load resistance increase so input impedance for this amplifier is increased. so means a amplifier we are using at a receiver so we can say that the performance based on the sensitivity and a bandwidth so in that case so receiver sensitivity is depending upon the bandwidth so that factor is about a load resistance if it is increase or decrease the effective impedance across this amplifier that will be increase or decrease so that's why for a given particular amplifier in a receiver so we need to use the two types of amplifier one is about a low impedance amplifier 
and another is about a high impedance amplifier. Now in this particular figure, so if you consider that a low impedance amplifier in that case we have that effective impedance at across this amplifier that can be a input impedance across this particular amplifier so that will be depending upon that a load resistor so generally we say that a effective impen in input impedance that will be ra and then we say that we have the another resistor that will be a bias resistor that bias resistor that is parallel to the this input impedance so total load impedance if you calculate that so that will be ra parallel to rb you can write ra rb divided by ra plus rb so means we can say that that ra rl is nothing but what a parallel combination of the ra and rb here so now that rl it is depending upon that this bias resistor and that bias resistor is depending upon that what will be the the capacitance there what will be the input capacitance so that's why we can say that for a given particular amplifier so bandwidth can is equal to or greater than the signal bandwidth because we have we can say that we have a load resistance that will tell you what will be the bandwidth for the given amplifier so if supposed to be we say that a load resistance is small then we can say that we have a large bandwidth and if that we can say that there is a low small load resistance So as we say rightly, we mention that a mean square of a thermal noise is is equal to what 4 kBT divided by RL to beta. So now, if you consider that for a low load resistance, if this RL is small, then thermal noise will be large. but we say that a low impedance amplifier low impedance amplifier that can be operate on the wide bandwidth so now if we consider that the low low impedance amplifier they have a limitations regarding what a load resistance or limitations regarding that a thermal noise
So means what we say that a low impedance is not a sensitive for a small signal voltage. So that's why we can say that a low impedance amplifier cannot be used for the long distance. So we can say that a low impedance is to be used for the short distance. These are the two factors. Wide bandwidth is there, but it can be used only for the short distance, not for the long distance. But in the case of a high impedance amplifier, if we use that a load resistance is larger, so then what will happen if load resistance will be larger so then we can say that a thermal noise will be reduced means we can say that for a given particular value of a load resistance so we will get that a low thermal noise so means we, they, we say that a input impedance we are saying depending upon that load resistors and that load resistors are parallel to RA and RB so if we increase or decrease this RA so we will get that RL higher or a lower so to achieve the high impedance or to design the high impedance amplifier we need to increase the value of a RA or RB So that a RA is the input impedance. So we have that bias resistor. So we can increase the value of a bias resistor. So we'll get that a high impedance amplifier there. But what happened here? If we increase the RL, means we can say that RL increases, noise is reduced. increasing this RL so then the receiver bandwidth will reduce means we say that for a high amplifier the factor is what that it has a narrow bandwidth or you can say that a small bandwidth or we can say that even if it is a small bandwidth, it can be useful for the a long distance communication because we can say that a load resistance will be changes. So that's why the bandwidth will change. So directly we can say that a bandwidth that will be inversely proportional to the resistance seen by the photodiode. So that's why we can say that for a high impedance front end amplifier, so if we increase that a load resistance, thermal noise will reduce, but it will operate at a low bandwidth. So narrow bandwidth instead of that, we can say that is about a, a low bandwidth. So instead of using word narrow, we can say that is about a low bandwidth. Okay, so now bandwidth we can say that high load resistance, so nice is decreased, but that receiver bandwidth will be decreases there. So that's why we can use equalizer circuit to improve the bandwidth of this front end amplifier. So that is about for a optical communication we have front end amplifier and that front end amplifier we can say that it has the low resistance and a high resistance value. So means high impedance or a low impedance value.
So we can improve that. The amplifiers. Or we will improve the amplification process in this amplifier. Now, to improve the bandwidth, to improve the bandwidth, we use the equalizer. So that the bandwidth will be improved there. If that bandwidth is less, than the bitrate, then that amplifier cannot be used. Okay, so that's why we need a new need a what equalizer circuit, or we need a specific circuit that will increase the load resistance, but that will increase the performance of the amplifier with respect to the bandwidth. So that is about a front end amplifier. Then we'll talk about that receiver operation. And that receiver operation in which we'll see that a performance of a receiver there. Now that performance of a receiver is depending upon that a decision circuit. So we have a decision circuit and that decision circuit will produce the output that is a V out and that V out we can say that for a given particular value of a, you can say supposed to be we have the level high, this is nothing but a level low, and this one is nothing but a level high. So for this high and low level, there are some noises, and because of those noises, we are not able to identify that a low value and a high value there. And another case is what? We need to use some particular threshold and that threshold will dif differentiate the value of a low voltage or a high voltage. Means if we are getting the output voltage that will be above the threshold value, then it is nothing but a high value. So means that high value will represent a 1. If that V out voltage that will be less than the threshold voltage, then we can say that a zero bit is set. This is about a one bit, this is about a, a zero bit. We can say that a pulse send and there is a pulse upset. So now in the absence of pulse. So that voltage is a low value and if supposed to be there is a pulse present, then they will get that high value. There. So from that we can find out the probability of error. The probability of error. Or we can say that a bit error rate or a error rate means probability of error when we transmit the 1 but we receive a 0 or when we transmit the 0 we will receive the 1. So according to that we can find out the probability of error for transmitting the 1 and 0 there. Then 
we should know that how many number of bits we are transmitting or number of pulses we are transmitting in a short particular interval and then how many number of errors occur in that particular period of a time or a short interval so that will give us the error rate or a bit error so bit error rate or we can say that a br that will be is equal to any by n t or we can write that in terms of a bandwidth that is about a transmission bandwidth this any is means what a number of errors and this n t that is nothing but a a number of pulses transmitted number of, number of errors occur in a short interval of a time t and number of pulses transmitted in short interval of a time t that will give us the bit error or a ber bit error rate or we can say that a ber so sometimes we can say that only the error rate some books we can say that a bit error rate now here that a bandwidth and that is depending upon that a bit rate is depending upon that what will be the pulse transmitted or a pulse transmission rate that is about a b so generally that a bit error rate that can be expressed in terms of what 10 to the power minus 3 10 to the power minus 6 10 to the power minus 9 10 to the power minus 12 10 to the power minus 15 this way we can express so now in optical communication so that ber in optical communication so we can use that 10 to the power minus 9 to the 10 to the power minus 12 if that br in this particular range then that particular system can be used okay if that is about a bit error rate. and that error rate is generally it is depending upon that the signal to noise ratio at a receiver and that why we can say that signal to noise ratio at the receiver because at a receiver we are receiving the bits or some particular signal level and that signal level has some particular limitations regarding high bit and a low bit there so to obtain that a bit error rate or at a receiver so we should know that a probability distribution of the signal equal signal probability of distribution of the signal at 1 or a 0 at the equalizer there and then we can calculate that what will be the bit error rate for the given particular signal now we are supposed to be consider this is about a threshold value or threshold level we have the bit i this one is about a bit low here and then for this bit we need to calculate that 
a probability here. So this is about a bit one. This one is about a zero. And we have some particular noise at the high or low bit there. So this is about a level one. And this one is about a zero level. And this one is about a one level. Now we are getting the voltage that will be high or low. And then we say that we have a bit transmitted that is one or zero. Now suppose I am saying that a bit is transmitted. This is nothing but a threshold voltage. Okay, this is nothing but a threshold voltage now. Now I am saying that if supposed to be a bit is transmitted, it is to be a zero, then we are getting a response is likewise for the bit is transmitted. So this is we can say that output probability when we are transmitting the bit zero. Then another case is we can see consider here. We are transmitting a bit one and we are receiving a one. So this is nothing but what probability of one transmitted and we are receiving the bits here. Okay. Now this one is about a common portion with this particular threshold. And this particular common portion supposed to be I consider that this one is a common portion that is receiving. So now here, this half of the portion, we supposed to be consider that a probability of zero. And this one is a, we can consider that when one is transmitted. What is the meaning of this? One is transmitted, but we are getting the output value well voltage or output voltage that will be the less than the threshold value. If we say that it's zero and one level, this one is about a zero level and one level. Means we consider here if we receive that a signal value above this threshold voltage, this is about a threshold voltage, then we can consider that it's one and below that it is to be zero. Now our aim is about to identify that for the given particular probability, probability of transmitting zero and probability of transmitting one, we are getting the output for this and this is this particular portion will this one is saying that we are getting the output when we transmit the one but output is below the threshold value and this one is nothing but what we transmit at zero but we are getting the output value that is above the threshold so now that is nothing but a error if we transmit the one we should get the one if we are receiving the if we are transmitting the zero so we should receive the one we can find out what is the a bit error rate now we can say that for a bit error rate a number of errors occur in a given particular interval. There. 
Now we see here the bit error rate at the receiver. We need to know about that what is the probability distributions of the signal at the equalizer. So now based on the label received at the receiver, the decision will make whether it is 1 or 0. Now if supposed to be, we can say that the probability we need to find out probability that the equalizer output voltage which is less than 1 Supposed to be considered one here. I'll just write here probability that the equalizer output voltage. is less than V that is about a threshold voltage when logic 1 is transmitted. Now means we can say that here it's about a P1. So that P1 of a V is equal to what minus infinity to a threshold value voltage V. So this one minus infinity here, threshold value V, okay, threshold voltage V here, V consider. And then we say that we are transmitting one probability of one we are transmitting with respect to py then we can consider that a probability that the voltage exceed V when a logical zero is transmitted. We can say that P of zero B and in which from V to infinite here. Okay, this is about P zero of P. P zero of P means what? From the V to infinite here. From V to infinite. So now this one is we are saying that we transmit the one we are receiving zero we transmitting the zero we are receiving the one there so that is nothing but what a probability distribution so in which because of some particular noise or because of a dispersion or because of the optical amplifier noise or because of the nonlinear effects. So then your system will receive a some particular level because of the noise, it will be increased or a decrease there. That's why the conditional probability we say here that is 
a p of y1 or p of y0 or we can say that conditional probability that is p of y x means in that case we consider that a probability of output voltage y Okay, means probability that the output voltage is Y. Output voltage Y. When X is transmitted. Or X is set. So, we will get that probability P of Y X. So, that is why here we can say that one is transmitted, we will get the P of Y output. One is transmitted. So one is transmitted, we will get the output y. So that's why here is the probability of output one. But here is the, even if one is transmitted, we will get that value below this, below the threshold voltage. So that's why that is nothing but the error for this one. So similarly, we have the error for the zero. So that's why we can find out that a probability of error if the threshold voltage That will be a V here, or you can say that if the threshold voltage is VTH, then the error probability PE is equal to what? A P1 VTH plus B. P0 VTH. So that is about a error probability. And this A and a B, these are nothing but a what a vague factor. So that A and B. These are the weighing factors that are for the probabilities either 1 or 0 occurs. So we can say that A is nothing but you can say that 1 or B that is about a 0 likewise. Okay. So you can say here. So probability of 1 and a probability of a 0 occurrence that can be is equal to what a is equal to b is equal to 0.5 so generally we consider and then we can find out what will be the bit error rate according to this expression we can find out the bit error so then we will see here for the value of a 0 and 1 is transmitted that we can see here that is about a 1 and 0 we transmitted here. So, what will be the noise statistics for the binary values of 0 and 1? So, means there is a bit present and bit is absent there. So, that is why a probability density function is used to identify that what will be the a probability of error when we say that a 0 is transmitted. About a threshold value voltage here or you can say that this is about threshold level and this one is about a variance ok like this. So, this is about a variance we say 
sigma on square and this one is about variance you can say that sigma of square now generally a sigma is nothing but a voice variance and that a square root of that sigma will get that a, a standard deviation and that standard deviation which is the measure of the width of the probability distribution there. now in the case here for a probability density function we can say that a probability of error to be obtained so we need to consider that a pulse is transmitted when we have bit 1 or uh, we will get that this is bit 1 and pulse is not transmitted we will get that bit 0 so according to that we can consider that a pulse is there this output will be on if pulse is not there then output will be off so that's why be on and this is nothing but what a be off and this is about a variance for sigma on that is a noise variance when bit is on noise variance for the bit is off generally a noise is a Gaussian distribution function so you can say that that noise will be a Gaussian noise. So that's why a mean and variance of this Gaussian output for a pulse is 1. And that for a pulse 1, so it has a B on and a variance is about a sigma on. So if it is a zero means zero pulse we have b off and a sigma off this is about b on is nothing but a mean and sigma on is nothing but the variance there and square root of this that will be a standard deviation for this on and off pulse So we can consider that here if there is a no pulse transmitted so means no pulse is present at a detector or at that particular clock period of a time so that's why we can find out if there is a no pulse transmitted but we will get some particular output and that output is nothing but above this threshold voltage so means by mistake we can consider that output voltage is above the threshold voltage and then no pulse is transmitted we will get the one so means at the equalizer we can consider that the output is what in between that a threshold voltage vts to infinite here when there is a no pulse transfer so that's why we can write here in terms of a variance and a noise so no pulse transmitted p of zero with respect to a threshold voltage and ranges from the threshold to infinite when we have a no pulse transmitted means zero is transmitted it's equal to vth to infinite here so that is about a function or a probability density function f of zero when zero is transmitted with respect to y 
and dy. So generally f of 0 is nothing but a function or a probability density function but 0 stands for there is a 0 level. So we can write here 1 by twice pi that is sigma of into Vts to infinite. Then exponential of minus V minus V of divided by twice of sigma square of here. That is bracket square. So that is about a probability of zero is transmitted. Now this one is about a probability of zero is transmitted and we'll get that output in terms of a probability density function and we have the label of 1 and 0 that is b on and a b of here. Similarly, we can calculate that when that there will be a 1 bit is equal to what? A minus infinity to Vth. Why minus infinity? Because here it is when 1 is transmitted but we are getting the output that is low. So that's why it is minus infinity up to the threshold. So that's why minus infinity to a VTH when one is transmitted is equal to minus infinity to VTH. And here probability density function F1 of V dV. And that is equal to one of power under twice pi sigma on minus infinity to Vth exponential of minus B on minus B bracket square by twice of sigma on square dv. And these are the two equations probability of 1 when pulse 1 is transmitted and pulse 0 is transmitted. 